myself Sujata Hiramat working in electronics and communication engineering department of RV College of Engineering as an assistant professor. So, today let us just consider model 3 of advanced VLSI course wherein basically the content which involved in model 3 are verification guidelines and what are the different data types which are used for the verification in the system Verilog. So, let us just see that what are the topics which are involved in the verification guidelines. So, the learning outcome of this topic under the verification guidelines is nothing but. So, it is first thing is let us understanding of verification guidelines and verification process and what are those and how it is going to be carried out. And to creating uh, to create a test bench environment and the functionality of different blocks which are involved in the verification environment and different tests it may be a direct testing random testing and constraint random testing and what are the advantages and limitations of each and finally we'll just consider the topic functional coverage and test bench components so these are the uh, major topics which we are going to cover under the main topic of verification guidelines. So, let us begin with what is verification. So, before let us understanding the guidelines, let us see that what you mean by verification. So, as a VLSI designer, so whenever he wanted to start a design, that means it has to start from the specification. So, depending upon the specification given by the corresponding people or it may be a customer or it may be a owner of the uh, corresponding design. So, he has to look for what are the specification accordingly he has to plan what is the steps which he has to follow. So, if we consider VLSI design there may be a two possibility as we have seen that it may be a FPGA flow or it may be a application specific IC design flow. So, we are not talking about what design flow it is. So, one of the important phase we are looking in the VLSI design flow is nothing but the verification. So, either the designer follows the FPGA flow or the ASIC design flow and he has to start from the specification again he has to undergo certain steps. So, initially he will be building the design that is the RTL engineer he is responsible to write the code usually they will using the hardware, hardware description language it may be a VHDL or the Verilog and once the coding is done for a particular design and it will move on to the next level that is the physical design. So, as a front end engineer that is RTL engineer once he write the program for a particular specific before it goes to the next step he has to make sure that it is working fine or not there is what it is called as the verification. So, verification is one of the important process or the steps which is involved in the involved in the VLSI design flow. So, just what you mean by verification of course, the RTL engineer is building the models that means, he will be writing the HDL language it may be very long or a VHDL according to the specification probably he is designing the digital uh, say, say let, let us assume that digital system designs. So, next thing is he has to check it out whether he has met the requirement or not that is what the verification need to happen. So, why the verification guidelines are required? So, as we need to consider that, so there may be a different design. So, because as you can see that if at all it is a small block we have a adder circuit multiplier, but when the complexity of the design increases it may be a laptop application or it may be a cell design or it may be a SOC design. There are million of transistors which are involved in it and also there may be a n, n number of blocks which are there in the design. So, each block is going to be handled by the individual person may be. Then as a verification engineer, he has to see that how those design blocks are working fine. So, that is what we are looking here the verification step is one of the important steps in the VLSI design flow as a verification engineer he has to confirm that whatever the design is developed it has to work according to the requirement that is nothing but 
the verification engineer basically checking the functionality of the design or we can say that the correctness of the design. So, it has to be done at the every step and if not, if you try to verify at the last step, the entire work or the time, everything is going to be waste. So, that is why the verification engineer is equally responsible to make sure that what is the quality of the design which is coming out, whether it is a meeting the corresponding spec at specified at the beginning or not. So, in order to do that, there are some guidelines verification engineer has to follow. So, that is what we are looking here as a verification engineer, what are the guidelines that you need to follow it. Because why, so something we wanted to verify means even I know that what is the functionality of the design. So, as of now, we are knowing that we will be writing the Verilog code for a particular design just for an example, simple example, let us consider it may be a multiplier or a adder circuit. So, whether it is a schematic entry or HDL entry. So, let us talk about the HDL entry. So, there is a model which is functioning as a adder and as a programmer, I will be knowing that how many inputs the adder circuit consists of. So, just, just for an example, if it is a 1 bit, we have an input A, B and there is a one more input that is carry in. And the corresponding output will be seeing that that is C out and sum. That is a simple example. So, when you write a Verilog code for a particular 1 bit full adder, after simulation, what we will be doing? We will check out what is the output which we are going to get it. So, that means as a designer or you can say RTL engineer, RTL designer, so the main model is written for the functionality development. So, how the adder is working? or how the multiplier is working or it may be any combo, uh, combo logic or it may be a sequential design. So, once it is done, the verification is done by writing the test bench. So, test bench is the model where we are providing the set of input vectors and we are checking out with those inputs how the design is working according to the requirement or not. So, since it is a small circuit, it may be a multiplier or a adder. So, I will be generating the test bench those test bench are given to the main model or the design and the test which is here nothing but the adder logic and the output which is produced from the design and the test is going to be verified. So, that is what the verification process happens here. So, how the verification is done? So, here I am checking out the output of the adder for a combination of 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 0, whatever it is. So, it really forms 0, 0 to 1, 1, 1. That means, I have to create a test bench in such a way that to confirm that the adder is working for all the combination means, so the test bench should cover all the possible combination of the input say from 0, 0 to 1, 1, 1 if at all we have the 3 input. So, how do you confirm that it is working fine? Because I know the functionality of the design. So, for a given input of say 1, 1, 0 of A, B, C in, the sum should be 0 and carry out should be 1. So, I am checking with my understanding of the design specification with the waveform what we obtained actually. So, that is for the small design. But when you consider a entire SOC design, how you are going to check out what is the functionality of the design once the output of the design under test coming out. So, since we are building the model and I am building the test bench and I am knowing that what are the combination of input I should provide and what is the expected output. So, I am checking the functionality or the verification of the design is going to be achieved by testing the waveform or the output response of the design under test. But what happens if at all we have a number of blocks which is designed by the different designers. That is why we need to follow the certain guidelines for the verification so that we should not get any bugs when the system or when the design is used in the real time application. So, the major roles, role of the verification engineer is nothing but he has to look for the bug of course, that is the thing. So, once the bugs are encounter, encountered, then he has to modify that means he has to report to the designer if possible to make the correction. So, that there will not be any bug ultimately once the design is completed. That is what in order to do that thing, 
So, the verification engineer has to follow the certain verification guidelines. So, the what are the verification process the as a verification engineer has to follow? The first step in the verification process is to prepare a verification plan which is tightly coupled with the design specification. That means, I cannot simply verify because until and unless a verification engineer knows the design specification, he cannot probably verify all the possible condition of the design. So, why because he should along with the design engineer or the RTL engineer or RTL designer, verification engineer also must see that what are the design specification accordingly he has to create his own verification environment. Then only we can say that the functionality of the design is going to be met at the end. So, the verification process allows verification engineer to find bugs. Of course, ultimate aim is nothing but the design should not have any bug, but if there is a bug it tells that the designer he has to look for it and you are improving the design process. But of course, the whatever the possible bugs which are expected or may be unexpected that will be modified, but there may be a scenario when the design is put into the real time application there may be a different kinds of bugs which are coming in that is not we are not talking about that, but make sure that the verification process need to be created in such a way that if there is a bug that has to be observed that is why we need to consider here. So, RTL designer write a code using the any one of the hardware description language according to the specification which are given and it is required to understand what is the input format, what is the transformation function and what type of output format he is using. So, based on this certain template what he is having, he is going to build the HDL, uh, he is going to build the model using any one of the language that is HDL. And there may be a ambiguity in the interpretation, interpretation because every designer once the problem is given, the way in which I interpret the design may be different from the other person. So, of course, both are meeting the specification, their intention is same, but the way in which they are looking at the problems may be different. But as a verification engineer, he has you have to consider that however he has written that also should be verified and the person who has written in a different way also should be verified. That means, we need to create a verification environment in such a way that the test bench which is created by different people has to perform the same verification process. As a verification engineer must also read the hardware specification, you need to create the verification plan and build test showing the RTL code correctly implements the features. That is what the intention of the verification engineer. So, the test bench is a setup or the environment that allows verification of the design under test. That means, as a verification engineer, I have to make sure that the functionality of the design is working according to the requirement which is specified in the specification. As a engin verification engineer, even we have to consider what are the design specification accordingly we need to verify it. So, why there are some guidelines, so why there are verification process in the sense, just for an example, if at all I am it is just an example, if at all it is ask you to verify after completion of building the house. So, that means, as a verification engineer, it is ask you to check out the verif the house is already built, you need to verify. So, what as a verification engineer, I am not, I will be checking that. So, house means it should have a room, it should have a hall, it should have a kitchen, bathroom, bedroom and so on. Is that the job? That means, it is in general house means these are the blocks which are consistent of. But how you exactly the verification engineer has to look the specification because the specification to build the house may be depending upon the owner whatever the choices. So, what verification engineer has to look here is how much amount, how much area he wanted for the kitchen how exactly he need, he is, 
hall, whether you want home theater or a small bathroom or a big kitchen, that is what the specification you need to verify. Because the spec or the owner of the house was given to the designer, the designer might have built the house, but as a verification, we should not only check the things are there or not. So, I should also know that what are the specification which is given by the owner. So, he wanted a big space for the kitchen that need to be verified because these are the common blocks. So, similarly in the verification process also we have certain common blocks. So, we need to provide the number of input vectors to verify any functional design under test. So, once the input vectors are given to the design under test, the outputs are produced, those outputs are verified with the reference model or there are some standard values which are there according to the functionality. If it is matching, we say that there is no bug. That is what the verification engineer. So, first and most thing is nothing but he has to look for the design specification, what it is mentioned and he has to work parallelly with the RTL designer in order to meet the requirement. That is the purpose of the verification engineer. Now, let us see that what are the different levels where the testing is going to happen. So, if it is at the block level, that means we have a single block. It may be a multiplier, it may be a controller or it may be a uh, 32 bit adder, whatever it is. So, it is easy to detect the bugs because it might have created by a single person. But what happens as the complexity of the design increases? Of course, when we use the low level simulator for uh, simulating the block level or a single block, of course, it is a faster and it may produce you the high performance. But the problem comes or a find a discrepancy when there is a blocks are integrated each other. So, when you are interfacing or when you are integrating many blocks for a particular system, after interfacing the blocks, you need to check out how effectively the blocks are working. So, individually there may, there may not be any bugs. But when they integrated with the many blocks, what are the possible bugs the verification engineer is looking? That is also one of the parameter he has to see. Why? Because the RTL engineer or RTL designer might have thought in a different way. There may be a different interpretation of the design and he has created according to his own. So, at higher level, what is happening? There may be a lot of blocks which are involved and the simulation performance is going to be reduced. So, at higher level we expect that all IO ports are going to be active and processors are crunching the data and caches are being refilled. There may be a possibility that simultaneous operations are happening. So, most widely we can expect data alignment and timing bugs which are sure to occur. So, the test you need to test the design under test that executes multiple operations currently as many blocks as possible which are active. So, after confirming uh, the design under test performance, again we need to check how it operates with the errors. Of course, there is no error, it is fine. So, there may be a possibility that we need to inject the error and we have to look for the functionality of the design. So, because in real time application, we do not know what type of bugs which are coming into the application. So, that is why we need to see that with bugs also how exactly the verification or how the functionality of the design is going to be considered. So, we can say that one can never prove there are no bugs left, always look for new verification tactics to handle those bugs. Of course, as a verification engineer, I will make sure that there is no bugs in the design, but every bug tells the engineer to modify his code. The, that is what the ultimate aim of the RTL designer as well as the verification engineer. So, let us move on to the VMM that is verification methodology manual. So, in general we say that VMM. So, what it is in the sense that, so before as we all now understand that the verification engineer creates the test of stimulus. So, that 
inputs will be given to the design under test, the outputs of the DUTs are observed and it is compared with the some reference value and then we will see that is there any bug or not. So, that means, we need to create an environment in such a way that there may be a possibility that there is a bug, but which may not be seen at the output. There may be a scenario that we need to consider. So, before VMM, what the people used to write it for every block or every design, let us assume that many people are working on the same design and the blocks are distributed and every block is designed by a single designer and he is going to create its own test bench environment. So, once the test bench environment is created, but the other one what is happening, he may be using it in a different way, again that verification has to be considered. So, whatever the test bench environment or the verification environment was created was not able to make use of the same testing environment for the person who has written in a different way. So, the reusability of the testing environment was not happening. So, every time he has to rewrite the test bench environment. So, what is happening other than the design time, the verification time itself was more. So, unnecessarily as the interpretation interpretation changes, he has to create the test bench in a different way. So, that is why there is a some set of or the some standard way in which the verification environment need to be carried out that was introduced here that is called as a verification methodology manual. So, the VMM was set of practices for creation of reusable verification environment in the system array log. So, once it is created, just for an example, once it is created, so that can be used for any kind of design verification or a test bench verification, we can say that. So, the reusability is going to be confirmed when the people are started making use of the VMM. It was actually developed by the Janik B and others at Qualys Design. It basically provides industry best practices developed since 2005. It includes a set of guidelines, recommendations and what are the rules for engineer to avoid common mistakes while creating the interoperable verification components. So, every time that means there is a some standard way if at all we follow it. So, it is going to save us the time as well as reusability increases and the common mistakes which the people were doing can be avoided. So, the VMM standard library provides the foundation based classes for building the advanced test benches. So, that is why now the people are using some standard way that is VMM and the VMM applications provide higher level functions for improved productivity. If at all we are working with the small blocks or a small model, of course, we may not require VMM, but if that box, box itself is belongs to a entire design. So, then again we have to look for how, how we can go for the VMM methodology. So, that is why we need to consider that if the corresponding block is a part of a larger system, then it is better to adopt the VMM compliant code. So, that it is helpful for both reusable both during the project as well as on the future designs. So, that is why this is a set of methodology that is VMM, the standard way in which there are certain guidelines that need to be followed by the every verification engineer. So, that it becomes reusable as well as it is a simple, I mean simplicity of the verification process also uh, comes into picture. So, the basic test bench functionality as we can consider here. So, as we know that the purpose of test bench is nothing but we wanted to verify the functionality of the design by providing the set of input vectors or a stimulus for the design under test. So, the steps which are involved here is generate the stimulus, apply those stimulus to the design under test, capture or observe the response from the DUT, check for the correctness, 
and measure the progress against overall verification goals. Some steps are accomplished automatically, there may be a possibility that the manually also we can handle it. So, in general, so every functionality is verified by writing the test bench environment. That means, as a verification engineer, you should create an test environment in such a way that the output of the verification is meeting the spec. That is what the ultimate aim of the verification engineer also. So, these are the basic steps which we are following, but how exactly it is done, we will be looking in future slides. So, as it is mentioned here, so first thing is we need to generate the stimulus. So, the way in which we are generating, that means as it is mentioned, if at all I have a 3 input, obviously I will generate 2 to the power of 3. If it is 128 bits, again I need to see that 2 to the power of 128 bits are going to be generated or not. The first method what we are following to generate the stimulus is nothing but directed testing. So, in, in this type is a type of functional verification in which the test cases are created to exercise specific feature or a specific functions of the digital design. So, that means in the direct testing as the name indicates where it is going to generate the number of stimulus which is looking for the specific feature or it may be a function of the particular design. And the test cases are designed based on the knowledge of the design specification and the intended behavior of the design. That means, whenever I am making use of the directed testing, it is understood that it is for the specific functionality and I know what functionality of the design accordingly I will be generating the stimulus. So, what is the intended behavior of the design I should know. So, engineers spend a good amount of time to understand the functionality of the design and identify different verification scenarios to cover the functionality. So, if at all you are verifying, that means you are creating the test bench for a small block. Let us assume that small block, it may be a multiplier. So, as a verification engineer, I know that what is the specific feature I am looking for. Of course, the functionality of the design multiplier 2 bit. So, whatever the combination of input I provide, I am expected that the corresponding output need to be generated. As well as I know the knowledge of the design specification that is a multiplier, I also know it. So, I am looking for if at all I am multiplying 2 cross 2 bit. So, what are the possible combination of input vector I need to generate that I will be planning and I am knowing that what is the expected output for every combination of input. Then simulate the design and the test with given input vectors and manually review the resulting log files or it may be waveform to make sure the design does what it is expected. So, I know that for a combination of say 1010 0, 0, what is the multiplier output. So, you need to observe some of the waveforms and make sure that whether it is functioning according to the given specification or not. So, this is a direct testing in the sense as a verification engineer, it is looking for a specific functionality and I also know that what is a design specification and what is the functionality of the design, how the test cases need to be verified and for every stimulus what is the expected output. So, this is how the direct testing is done and once the test works correctly, you check it off in the verification plan and move to the next level. So, direct testing is a steady progress and it also produces immediate results since little infrastructure is needed when guiding the creation of every stimulus vector. So, given ample time and staffing, direct testing is sufficient to verify many design. So, in this case what is happening? So, direct testing is the one way in which the stimulus are given to the design under test. In this case, if the design is small, as a verification engineer, he is 
spending a lot of amount of time to understand what is the functionality of the design and for a given input of input vector what is the expected result. So, he has to cover almost all the combination of inputs and make sure that of course, there is a immediate result which he is going to observe and then he has to see that with is there any bug or not. So, if not he will be continued with the next stimulus and he will be continued. But what is the ma major limitation of this direct testing is nothing but a bigger risk is only test for predicted behavior. So, I know that what is the functionality for that I am writing the directed testing. Sometimes it leads to extremely costly, why because bugs found in the silicon which were missed out during the verification process. So, sometimes what happens here is direct testing in the sense as an simple example. So, again let us consider a adder logic. So, there is a bug whenever you generate the input vector 110 that is a 6. So, as soon as you provide the input vector say 110 wherein for the input combination of 110 we expect that the carry is 1 and the sum is 0. If you apply the corresponding test vector to the design under test there is a bug but it still produces logic 1. But the next test vector was 1 1 1. So, output for a combination of input 1 1 1 the COT is also say 1. So, what is happening here is, so in the directed testing I will be generating the input vectors for a given in number of combinations. So, since it is a 3 boot I will be generating 0 0 0 0 0 1 0 1 0 and so on until 1 1 1. So, if there is a bug at the circuit during the test vector when we apply that is 1 1 0, but the next combination which have generated is also 1 1 1 for which the COT is 1 that may not encounter or that may not be seen during the verification plan. because 1 1 0 is also having the output 1 and 1 1 1 is also having the carry out as 1. So, that is what the problem occurs that bug was missed out, but if the missed bug out is difficult to verify after it is going to the manufacturing process. So, as a verification engineer you should create a stimulus in such a way that all the bugs which if at all it the design consists of it should be observed at the output. So, directed testing is extremely time consuming and difficult to maintain for more complex design to verify. So, as we can see that if it is a small design and as an engineer we are also knowing what is the functionality of the design and we will sit and verify whether the output observed is produced is working fine or not and then accordingly we can see that. But if by chance any bugs are missed out during the direct testing, so then it is very tough for us to realize that if that bug is encountered after the manufacturing. So, entire time is going to be waste and also cost of the design is also going to be increased. So, that is why we have to make sure that we need to create the input vectors in such a way that if there is a bug that should be observed at the output. So, that is may not be possible in the case of the direct testing. So, why because, so considering this limitation, so just you consider a figure here, how the directed test increment cover the future in the future plan. So, as you increase the that means, if designer in spending a sufficient amount of time the coverage is going to be achieved 100 percent. That means, each test is targeted at a very specific set of design elements and if you had enough time you could write all the tests needed for 100 percent coverage of the entire verification plan. By chance if at all you missed out some input vector to check it out 
but unluckily what happens there may be a scenario which comes for the particular combination of input when it is used for the entire system. So, that is why direct testing means in order to achieve the 100 percent coverage we have to consider all scenario one by one. So, it takes more amount of time to get the 100 percent coverage. And the test coverage if at all you consider. So, let us assume that this is a total space which is considered which has both feature as well as the there are some bugs. So, in this space as there are many features and some of which are having bugs. So, you should create an test bench in such a way that all the features are considered and all the bugs which are expected need to be identified. If there is a bugs missed out or it is not covered in the test bench the corresponding bug then in real time application if that scenario exists and there may be a bug then the entire verification plan whatever it do, it has done it is going to be waste. So, that is why we people are moved to the random testing that means direct testing in the sense we have certain functionality we are generating the set of combination of inputs and we are expecting what is the intended output for the particular test vector. Of course, it takes more amount of time because individually you need to create a test bench or a test vectors to check out what is the functionality. And if there are bugs which are encountered again you need to modify it and again you need to verify the functionality of the design. But as the complexity of the design increases, is it possible for a verification engineer to look for all the combination of input what he is looking for and time also increases and the verification time may be more than the design time then the time to market we can expect when you are able to produce it. But because of the limitations what we have seen for the direct testing. So, the people go for a random testing. So, what is this random testing in the sense? So, as we just consider direct testing it is simple as that example suppose if at all you have written a code if there is a press key press generate the corresponding value or the corresponding ASCII code or some values. So, in this case what happens yeah, as soon as I press A it generates the corresponding equivalent code. Then I will press B I will be generating the corresponding code. If it is a direct testing I will be pressing C, D, E and I will just verifying whether the corresponding output is generated for the key press or not. But what is the random testing in the sense why, why because in real time application we do not know what is the sequence of key press. So, it may be random it may be first yes it may be P, it may be Q, it may be Z. Not only the key press the sequence of random key press is also changing in real time because the people will may not be interested to look for however we have verified. So, the random testing in the sense that so when you generate or when you give the random input vectors there should not be any bugs in the design. So, the possibility comes or all the expected bugs are bugs may be expected when you apply the random testing because the sequence of random that means randomly I am pressing the key then there may be a chances of bugs which may encounter it. So, and it is not possible to follow the direct testing as the complexity of the design increases. So, as the design complexity increases or doubles of course, it takes more amount of time and also the people to work on that for the verification purpose. So, both uh, we do not wanted to uh, waste the time or we wanted we do not wanted to make use of the time for longer time for the verification as well as for the many people and which is not suitable or it is not a desirable that is why there is a need of methodology that finds bugs faster to reach the goal of 100 percent coverage. So, if at all there are 128 bits 
I do not want to generate 2 to the power of 128 bits and I need, I do not want it to check for every combination of input. So, generate the random testing. So, check out for a some specified random testing. Make sure that if there is no bug, it is expected that there will not be any errors or the bugs in the design. So, random testing is faster, but make sure that how efficiently the random stimulus which we are generating is the main concern. To overcome the limitation of the direct testing, random test is used and random stimulus is crucial for exercising the complex designs. So, just you need to leave hooks where the test can perform certain actions such as shaping the stimulus and injecting disturbance. Building this style of test bench takes longer than a traditional directed test, especially the self checking points. What is happening here is, so when we are generating the random test, we do not know what is the sequence of input vector, the uh, design, uh, it is applied to the design under test. So, when the random uh, way of stimulus are coming into picture, so we need to predict the value of the corresponding or a corresponding output for a given random input. So, wherein the self checking portion that means we need to spend some amount of time initially whenever there is a random testing is applied, what is the expected result for a given random test that also has to be verified. So, that is why initial time for the random testing is little bit more as compared to the directed testing, but after that it will reach the 100 percent coverage within a small amount of time as compared to the direct testing. So, direct testing is nothing but step by step that we are considering here. So, to reach the 100 percent coverage of course, you need to spend a lot of time and you need to see that whether the design is met the requirement or not. So, instead of going for the direct testing, there is a something called as a random testing. It is suitable why because as the complexity of the design increases, it is not possible for going the direct testing. So, time also increases and the people which we need is also working on that also it is more. So, that is why the people will are interested to generate the test cases using the random way, but the initial setup uh, we need to require here because you need to predict what may be the corresponding output for the given random test. So, that is why the initial time is little bit more as compared to the direct test, but the overall time for reaching the coverage of 100 percent is less as compared to the direct test. So, instead of going for a complete random testing, so the people named that as a constraint random testing. So, simply generating the random value which probably may not be required, some of the things where those set of input vectors may not be required, but still we are generating it randomly. That is not the case, right, always as the number of inputs are increases. So, probably we need to expect that we need to check for how many combination of inputs. So, if the randomly generated test vectors may not be covering all the different scenarios of the design. So, then again there may be a chances of bugs which we can expect in the design. So, that is why instead of going for complete random testing, there is something called as a constraint random testing. So, that means we are going to consider uh, the random testing, but there are some constraints which are given to generate the random test. So, instead of generating the random stimulus, constraint random stimulus are used to meet the requirements that is based on the specification. So, depending upon what functionality or the specification we are doing it or we are verifying it, based on that let us generate the constraint random test, so that the amount of time can be saved. So, those constraint may be you just specify that what may be the address that is which is of 32 bit and what type of opcode you are looking it may be addition, subtraction or shift or some other operation and what may be the length of the uh, word which we are going to look for. So, there are some constraints which are specified accordingly the testing the tests are generated. So, that is why we call that as a constraint random testing. So, these values are sent into the design 
and also sent into the high level model that predicts what the result should be. So, the same because once the uh, constraint random tests are given, so the output of the design under test need to be verified. So, with respect to the sum reference value, so we need to send to the corresponding blob which is responsible to find out what is a predicted output for a given input. So, then the design actual output is compared with the predicted output, then there is a bug, if there is a bug again it has to be modified. So, the verification environment need to be created again to see that if there is any bugs or not. So, that is what the intention of going for a constraint and constraint random verification methodology gives an effective method to achieve the coverage goals faster. So, and most importantly it helps in finding corner case problems also. So, when the one once let me if at all it is a direct testing what happens there are some cases which may not be aware of the which may not be observed at the design under test. If it is a random also what happens is simply it is generating the number of input vectors wherein the real problem which is existing in the design which may not be encountered. So, you need to create the constraint random testing. So, where you have certain limitations also to generate the random test and then within that constraint random because of the specification what it is given for the random testing to generate the constraint, uh, constraint test vectors probably it will cover all possible condition then the bugs are encoded if there are bugs which are coming uh, which are observed that can be handled easily. So, that is why the instead of going for direct constraint or the random. So, that is we call that is a constraint random testing. So, it gives us the efficient way in which we can verify the functionality of the design. So, when we consider the test coverage, so a random test often covers a wider space than the directed one. There may be extra coverage may overlap other test or may explore the new areas that we might not have anticipated. So, there may be a new areas find a bug. If there is a bug, so just you can see here that. So, once you generate the constraint random test, it may encounter with the new areas here. So, with the help of this constraint random test, all possible features and if there are bugs which are going to be observed. And there may be a some scenario or some features which may not be covered in the constraint random testing. So, under such condition you should again handle with the direct testing. So, wherein you will be directing directly to the corresponding features. So, that means extra care if at all it is required. So, the people are also write the direct testing which is required if this feature is not covered in the constraint random testing. So, that is why you can say that. So, need not have to create a many test cases for the constraint random testing and it will also creates. So, only thing is if there is an bug encountered. So, again we need to modify the number of the way in which the constraint random test is generated and ultimately make sure that it is achieving the 100 percent coverage. So, basically we will go for the way in which we considered here, it shows the path to achieve the complete coverage. So, basically start with the constraint random test. So, run with the many different seats so that all possible combination of the input vectors can be given to the design under test. So, based on the functionality coverage report, so whether bugs are encountered or without bugs or if there is no bugs it is fine. But if there is a possibility that you encounter a bugs again read generate it. So, make the minimal minimum code changes perhaps by using new constraints or by injecting the errors or delays into the design. That means, try the possibility that. So, if at all you generate a new constraint there may be a chances of encountering the bug. So, just try to rectify it how efficiently you are verifying the design so that if at all any bugs which are there in the design should be observed during the verification plan. That is what the ultimate aim. Of course, as a verification engineer, I should look for bug free design, but if there is a bug, it is helping the entire design process. So, that means 
as a verification engineer, you should create an environment in such a way that bugs are observed at the output. But if I generated the input vector, it is not able to detect the bug in the design. And ultimately, we say that there is no bug and we cannot say that it is functioning efficiently. So, that is why how, how efficiently the verification engineer test or verify the design. So, the entire process of the VLSI design depends on the verification plan. So, once the verification completes, next step is going to be carried out, but if it is given to the next phase of the VLSI design with bugs, then lot of problems which may encounter in future. So, this is how the people will do with the constraint uh, random testing. So, make sure that 100 percent coverage is achieved and all possible bugs are observed and if not, there may be a chances because we are generating the constraint random testing. So, there may be a scenario some bugs may be missed or some feature so may be missed for a generated random constraint testers. So, under such conditions, we need to generate some directed test cases which are very specific to that feature, then verify it functional coverage and then you continue it. So, most of the time the constraint random test is covering the 100 percent coverage, but if there is a possibility along with the constraint random testing, generate some of the direct testing which is specific to particular feature to check it out. So, then we can uh, spend most of your time in the outer loop that is what without expected the direct testing. If there is a cases or few feature need to be verified using the direct testing to achieve the 100 percent coverage. So, this is uh, just we have considered what is a verification guidelines. So, just I will say that there are set of guidelines verification engineer has to follow. So, that we will make sure that there will not be any bugs in the design. So, the general procedure what the people are doing is the test pattern generation, those test patterns are given to the design under test and then the output of that will be observed and it is verified with the some reference model and then we say that it is meeting the requirement or not. That is the entire procedure uh, process of verification that we have just considered with a different technique of generating the input vectors. It may be a direct testing or it may be a random testing or it may be a constrained random testing. So, only thing is if it is a direct testing you need to sit and verify for every given input what is the expected output. So, you will take a little bit more amount of time in order to reach the 100 percent coverage. So, instead of that people will go for a random testing because when the particular design used in the real time application, we do not know what type of uh, sequence of uh, events are happening. So, it has to check with the randomness. So, that is why the people will go for a random testing. So, instead of going for the random testing, so it is better to go for a constraint so that we can limit or we can see that efficiently the stimulus are generated with respect to the design specification. So, that is why looking at the constraints or the looking at the design specification, we are generating the test cases. So, with that with the short time we are able to achieve the 100 percent coverage. So, that is what we can say that a direct testing and a random testing or it may be a constraint random testing. Next, we will move on to the what should be randomized. So, the thing is we have to see that what should be randomized, why we need to consider it. So, the primary types of bugs found with random data are data path errors, may be perhaps with the bit line mistakes or whatever some other bugs. But most interesting is nothing but we need to find the bugs in the control logic. So, I need to think broadly about all the design inputs such as following. That means, 
why there is a bug. Of course, there may be a discrepancy between the way in which the people are handling the design. So, when the uh, testing environment created or a verification environment is created, there may be a chances of bugs which may encounter. But why there is a possible, that means every time the every test bench is designed for the particular model, it is verified and of course, there may be a scenario which is covering all the possible combination, but still there are some kind of bugs which may encounter. So, why because there may be a possibility that device and environment configuration or it may be some protocol exceptions, errors and violations or there may be due to the delays and input data. So, next uh, just let, let us see that what is this uh, device and environment configuration. So, what is the most common reason why bugs are missed during the testing of the RTL design? So, is there any way that means we are trying to generate the test vectors so that it covers almost all the possible combination of the input vectors so that we can see that if there is a bug or not, but there still there is a possibility. Why? Because not enough different configurations are tried during the verification plan. So, it is just most test just use the design as it comes out of reset. So, before initializing the certain applications on that. So, that means as a designer intended to start his design from the reset or a start button. So, the verification might have started with after the started with the verification of the design after the reset press. So, that is why there may be a certain scenario where the simultaneous happens, uh, simultaneous uh, things may be happening. So, just for an example, when we are watching a video, suddenly call comes. So, sometimes, so we expect that we are attending the call and call should connect. That is the scenario what we are expecting. But sometimes what happens, neither the call connect or the video will run. So, ultimately both will go off. So, that is what the scenario we need to check. That means, there is a possibility bugs which are there, we have to look for that. So, this is like a testing a PC's operating system right after it has been installed without any of the application installed. That means, the verification process is carried out just inserting or just installing the PC's uh, that is the operating system which is in, installed. So, when you started uh, installing the different kinds of application on a system or it may be a mobile, then the real bugs are encountering. So, that is why that means, the different environment configuration might not have verified during the verification phase. That is why there is a possibility of the bugs after the uh, entire verification process co completes. So, in a real world environment, the design under test configuration becomes more random as the longer it is in use. So, sometimes what happens as and when you are using the, it may be a mobile or a laptop. So, there may be a possibility that different types of bugs may encounter. So, we are not, that means those possible bugs which are not covered during the verification uh, process. Why? Because it is depending upon the uh, scenario, it may be a, uh, because of the longer time it is used or when you have a multiple processes which are opening at the concurrent uh, concurrently or many activities which are happening. There may be a different scenario in the real time application. Those bugs which are not might not have verified during the verification process. So, should randomize the entire environment configuration including the length of the simulation, number of devices and how they are configured. So, we should have a proper planning how each device is configured and what are the possibility of real time uh, scenario may occur that should be covered in the verification environment or during the verification process. So, if that is the case then we expect that there may be a less bugs in the, when the system is used in the real time application. 